What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burn Down. As you know, I'm Eric. And I'm Justin. And today we have a guest who is known for his golf, his beard, his cigars, and most importantly, his bourbon. None else than Bill Bender. What's going on, my friend? What's up, guys? How you doing? What's happening? Trying to try not to uh, try not to freeze out here. You got the Habana hut over there. You're in the outside. I'm a little jealous. Not gonna lie. Just hanging out. I, I'm, I'm not gonna complain. I was cold the last couple days. I wore a sweater on the golf course yesterday, and it was immaculate. And now it's, now it's starting to get breezy. But but I'm not complaining. You guys need to come down. You need to hang out. I mean, at least you got to play some golf. It's gotten to the point where it's no more golf up here. Yeah, it's not even worth it. I'm from New Jersey originally, and believe me, I remember those days where it's like late November, you know, just hitting December, and you're like, it's 50, it's 48, I could do this, I could do this, <laughs> and then you get out to like the second hole, and you're like, why am I out here? Right? <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. It's even, and it's funny, because the you'll have the leaves all over the golf course, there's a little bit of a breeze coming in, and yeah. a little chill, and you're like, I'm going to troop, I'm going to, I'm toughing it out, I'm toughing it out. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna and then do your it. ball lands in a pile of leaves, and you're like, ah. All right, this let is, me clean that up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, before we get into this, uh, we have to talk about what we're smoking. Yeah. We talk about what we're drinking. And I see that you have a bottle of JTS Brown. Yes. It's uh, this bottle is this this label. Let's just say this label. So, um, it's it's a pretty funny story. So I've never heard of this before up until, you know, two or three, maybe three years ago. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It, it might have been four years ago. Um, so I, you know, my grand exit out of the hospitality industry of 20 years, uh, there was a the culmination of everything that I've learned to do and not to do was put into this bar, which is actually right down the street from where I live. And uh, it's called CWS. Um, and the inside bar was, it, it was my baby, you know, 500 plus whiskeys on the back bar. We won a uh, bourbon bar. Uh, top 50 best bourbon bars in, in the country uh, after uh, we opened after the first like six months. And um, this couple has moved from Kentucky down to Florida. And uh, they were like, hey, man, you know, I met them a couple times. They, they became regulars. And they came in with a bottle of JTS Brown. And I was like, what's this? <laughs> and they say, oh, you know, we, we decided to give this to you, gift this to you because this was our favorite back home. And it was only $11 and it was only 12 bucks a bottle. So me thinking... Like, okay, all right, you know, it's 12 bucks, you know, like how good can it be? And I tasted it, and we drank the whole bottle in literally like an hour. And I was like, oh my God, this shit's amazing. I'm a big fan of it. So then I dig deeper and, you know, um, we're going to fast forward, you know, a, a couple of years to, to where, you know, now I'm out of the industry and, and uh, you know, we filmed season one of Binder Stash. And that's when I start, you know, I, I do the, I do, I was doing the golf course reviews and we'll get into that later. And uh, I'm like, yo, I got to do this. JTS Brown, I got to do this for you. And, you know, so then you start doing research. JTS Brown has been around forever. I mean, yeah. like a hundred years forever. And uh, The Hustler uh, with Paul Newman. I was so going to bring it up. I was going to bring it up. Yeah. And it's literally the first scene. It's like bartender, JTS Brown, no no ice, no glass. You know, just, you know, go preacher. I think he says, go yeah, get me a preacher. bottle of JTS Brown. And I'm like, holy shit. I was like, <laughs> this is JTS Brown. And then, of course, you know, the color of money comes out you know you know years later and, and you know heaven hill buys it in, in I don't know, the 30s or the 40s so he takes it over from jts brown and so on uh and i don't know it's just like i like i gravitated to this i mean it's like the packaging like everything about this bottle you know even the the, the bottle and bond sticker you know on the back it's just oh, all yeah. original and it's 12 dollars. so i start like you know i get a bottle here and get a bottle there you know i gotta get a chip because it doesn't it's not available in florida and uh you know i start doing uh blind tastings with like <laughs> some labels that won't be named you know the name <laughs> yeah you know, we're all we're all thinking right now yeah and these these like hoity-toity like snobby you know wissy aficionados you know they come in and like a hundred percent every time they're like this is the better whiskey and i'm like you idiots! It's, only 12, <laughs> it's twelve bucks. It's not. It's not thirty five hundred on the secondary market like you guys are paying. And yeah. so 
this this bottle it's it's become it's every every day and every time I, I take another sip it, it it becomes more more a part of me I guess you could say that's awesome I mean I love it because I mean the reason I brought it up is because of the hustler you know and I I love to shoot pool and I've loved watching that movie and that's uh, you're right the scenes like preacher head down the corner get follow JTS Brown no ice no glad right and he hands <laughs> no, him like no ice no glad because 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 it's uh, Jackie Gleason. He pulls yep, out his money, right? Minnesota and then he, fats, yeah. yeah, Minnesota Fats. And then you see Paul Newman, he's all drunk. He's like, Break your, let me about JTS Brown. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, Preacher, come on down, give me some bourbon. A JTS Brown, no ice, no glass. Because he's got all his money, he's like, a free, he's all disheveled. And then Minnesota Fats is all like done up. So I love that, and that's where I found out about JTS Brown. I'm like, holy shit, he's drinking JTS Brown. Dang, that's I've I've never even heard of it. So that's a cool it's story a mere, for me. It's a it's a mere fact that it's it's only twelve. I mean, it's it's getting more expensive, but at eleven dollars and ninety nine cents for the packaging and what the juice is inside. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, it's not a George C. Stag or it's not anything like phenomenal. Blow your head off, but. It's an everyday drinker, and for the pound for pound, for packaging, for juice, for flavor, for price point, it's undefeated. Huh. It's, it's literally undefeated. I mean, for twelve bucks, it's the best bang for your buck I'm when it comes to definitely gonna have to look at exactly look after so. that. best bang for your buck. Yep, perfect. So, what are you smoking with it? Uh, the beauty about this bottle is, is that you can smoke anything with this. Nice. You know, whether it's you know full bodied or it's light. Um, uh, I, I've grown accustomed to uh, the Tatuaje line. Uh, this is a, a Reserva Broadleaf. Um, That's a great stick. That's a great it's stick. It's a great stick. You know, and then again, there you go. It's like, you know, the, people say like Tatuaje is like a cult, you know, cigar following, you know. If you yeah. don't really know anything about it, then you don't know anything about it. Um, and uh, actually, I didn't know anything about Tatuaje either uh, up until uh, Emily, uh, she will films. Uh, her father is like, <laughs> like a cigar smoker, like daily, like doesn't fuck around cigar smoker. And he's like, oh, d- smoke on this tatuaje. And he's like religious about tatuaje. Like that's all he smokes. And, wow. I, you know, I just started smoking different kinds, you know, different sticks. And, and I was like, man, these are so good. And again, another, you know, another product at for price point, pound for pound, like you can't really beat these. Yeah. You know, oh so yeah, they're great. no doubt. That's why he's always been. I mean, we've had a couple of them on there. I, the reservers are great. Um, I actually was when I was picking out a cigar to smoke today. I actually had a Fausto in in my humidor, and I'm like, do I want to smoke this one? I'm going, I don't know. I'm like, we're gonna be drinking bourbon. Let me try to find something yeah. a little bit fuller than that. So then I picked the one that I had. But the Twi is great. I mean, the K222 is good, they, and then they even have what I picked up. For Halloween, that I actually didn't even open on yeah, Halloween. The, the Halloween sticks. was they have the the skinny, skinny monsters. Sick. Yeah, and they, I mean, the whole line. I picked up the whole box and I didn't even open it on Halloween because I was so busy with other stuff. But and the original pork tenderloin too. The original pork tenderloins. Mm. Those those sticks are. They're, the they're like is good. Underrated. People don't like yeah, you they said, don't People don't know about them because people think when they first get into cigars, they think of the big names, right? Padron, Davidoff, Arturo Fuente. Uh, and maybe Drew Estate might come in there, Liga Pravada. But people don't know yeah. about Tatuaje. They're like, what the heck is I can't even say they it. Will. I'm not going to smoke it. They will. But that's for damn sure. So, so tell we, them the little thing we got going for. Yeah. So we obviously know you're a big bourbon guy. So we tried to whip out some some things that we had. I brought some stuff from my house. Justin brought some stuff from his house. So we wanted you to choose. I don't know if you like any of these, but we, this is what we scoundered up. So we got the Maker's Mark 46. The Angels Envy, we got Old Forester, and we got I think Buffalo Trace. A Buffalo Trace. Is so that Old For- What is that Old Forester? So we got Old. Fo- it's Old Forester Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Hundred. That's pro. it. You drink, drink that. That's a good one. I like uh, that. All right. Uh, done, done, deal. done deal. Done um, deal. I'm a, they make. They made. They made. They, they they came out with some amazing rye whiskey, actually, and their and their 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 barrel strength that that you know they're doing single barrel uh, barrel strength. Uh, picks are it, are they're phenomenal as well, and I think if I'm not mistaken, this is a fairly new release. This this particular bottle, or am I wrong? Do you know? Yes, it is. Okay, it is. What's interesting is I don't. And, even, and, I'm not a big rye guy. Like, I don't drink a lot of rye. I typically just drink bourbon. Um, so I'm interested to uh, to try this rye. Yeah, this was given to us. This it was. was. It was. Yeah, so this was given to us. But yeah, it was pretty good. But uh, the cigars that we have. Oh. 
and I can still never say this name. I always ask Justin, but it's the my father, <laughs> the my father Le Bujet, Bijou, 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 my Bijou, father. Yeah, man. They're so great too. I figured it'd be a, it's a good pairing with the uh, with the with the whiskey that we have here. And then yeah, I have a um, LFD Double Lajero Chisel. Mm, is what I'm smoking. So like I said, I was we're, I figured we were gonna be drinking some whiskey, drinking a little something, put some hair on your chest. Yeah. So I'm like, I gotta, I gotta kick it up a notch. I'm gonna go with the double Lajero, nice and spicy. It's gonna pair well. You always gotta kick it up a notch. You gotta kick gotta it up kick a notch, up. like Emerald Agassi yeah. says. Bam! Come on. Bam! Wait, we're hang, we're hanging out with the man himself, so we gotta do it. But uh, so as we, as we uh, cut our cigars, we usually do our little segment where we cut our cigars, we light them up. But I feel like we're gonna we'll do a little what, different turn I, today. Did I start? I started. I, I started too soon. I apologize. Hey man, you do whatever you want. You're the guest on our on exactly. our show, the burn down. You do whatever the hell you want. So that's why I will say we'll twist it up. We'll turn it a little bit. So let's ask you a question, and then as you're answering your question, we'll light up our cigar and we'll get right into it. So Bill, if we could ask you, um, very generic first, based off question, you know, who is Bill Bender? Who is this guy? Man, uh, the, the easy version is. Uh, Bill, Bill Bender's old and over it. <laughs> <laughs> o and O, baby. O and O, baby. Old, old, old and O, and o. old and over it. Um, over the bullshit. Uh, too old to deal with it. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I've changed the last twenty years of my life. You know, you could probably write a book or or make a movie about it. Uh, you should. It, you should write a book, man. <laughs> write a yeah. book. <laughs> the, the trials and tribulations of, like, of Billy Bender. Yeah, baby. Um, the Bender book. Uh, the Bender the book. Bender book. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I've led. I've led a crazy twenty years. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not proud of some of the things that I've done. Uh, you know, I've gone way off the deep end there for a little bit. And uh, you know, there, there was a point where it was like, oh yeah, you're 28. Guess what? Like looking in the mirror, like you're 28 right now. And you're not making it to 32, so you might as well live it up for the next four years. <laughs> and then 32 comes by, you know, comes around, and it's like, wow, I can't believe you're still around. You know, you're not making it to 36 anyway. And then 36 comes around, and then it's like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to shoot from the hip now and <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> you know, basically, um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say that, you know, when I was behind the bar, uh, you know, I had a little bit of an attitude, you know, towards people. Uh, that would come in and be like, "Oh, let me get it. Let me get a Jaeger bomb." And I'm like, "Why don't you get the hell out of here and go down the street for that crap? You want to drink good <laughs> stuff, then you could stay." You know, and and you know when it come came down to it, you know at the end it's like, you know the customer's always right. You know, so you just kill everybody with kindness, and that's basically how uh, I live my life now. You know, you just you just be the nicest person as possible. You know, there's always some instances where, you know, ignorance and, and stupidness deserve a smart ass reaction, you know, putting people, I'm from New Jersey originally. So, and an, and an Italian to, to, add, to get go. on top of that. And, and, you know, so the fuse, you know, has gotten longer as I've gotten older, but you know, instead of being like, what are you, an idiot? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, well, you hear the shit that comes out of your mouth. You're just like, <laughs> okay, man, oh, sure. Miss, you know, whatever. And you know, that's basically you know, how, how, where I'm at right now, it's, you know, if, if it's, if it's too crazy, it's just like, all right, you know, do your thing. I'm cool. You know, just, just, let's just move on. Let's just, just got to move on. Oh, yeah. You know, well, just, I, I'm, at least I've, amount of drama as possible. I, I like that where you, you know, kill them with kindness because majority of the time when people, when they're, saying the shit that they say or they're you know they're trying to take stabs at you what they want is they want you to react with anger and they want you to get upset and they want to start that little fire because that's what they're going for but if you go the opposite and you just smile and like it goes in one ear and out the other doesn't even phase you it makes them even more mad yeah because they're like damn it i can't get under his skin you're just like oh okay whatever that's so, and then they just yeah, wind up that's, that's get under awesome. their own skin yeah and then it ends and, and, and then it ends up that they keep going and making themselves look worse, you know, trying to, you know, the, mm, 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 and it's just not dicks. working. The little you know what I mean? So 
so to go back as you were saying when you were younger was it was it more like kind of like the eagles like life in the fast lane type of deal is that where you're yeah, you're, yeah I wanna, uh, the extreme fast lane okay. like i went i went plaid there for you know a, like ludicrous speed for a good decade and uh I'm not going to say it wasn't fun because it was, and I'm not going to say that I wouldn't change anything because then I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah. But yeah, it was uh, it was wild. It was it was nuts. It was wild. Yeah. You lived the you lived the life you you could. I mean, yeah. There's, there's no yeah, there's yeah. no other change in it. Absolutely, and like you, you know, like I said, that as crazy as it was, you would never change it because it makes you who you are. You live and you learn from that stuff. And look, we are today. You're underneath a, a hut in Florida, drinking some damn good bourbon, a good cigar, and some warm Florida weather. And you're on the burn uh, down. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on the burn down, boys. I'm on, I'm on the burn down. It's, it's like, like I'm here. Like I worked out this morning. I was like, yo, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get ready for these. I gotta mentally prep for 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 this tonight. You know, I, I had to make sure I was at the top of my game for you guys. Yeah. All right, so that's what, that's really why you didn't wear your blazer. You wanted to wear that tight long sleeve shirt, show off the pump you got this morning. I don't even, <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't even fit in half the shit that I have anymore. It's, it's crazy. You know, what? you know, we're we're about to start shooting some some new stuff, and uh, you know, I, I kind of let myself go there for a little while, and and <laughs> you know, I was I was 180 pounds soaking wet. You know, uh, you know, a couple years ago, and now it's like if I if I get under two hundred five, like I'll shed a tear of joy. It's crazy. <laughs> you put on the, uh, the COVID twenty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, like I'll be honest, like it's not like I didn't eat. You know, I didn't get hammered yesterday on the golf course doing the go- the golf course review that I just posted uh, today. But I, you know, I went home and you know, there's a box of Twinkies there, they're just staring at me. Yeah, you know, they're they're egging me on, and I'm like, oh, you want to go? I'll eat ten of you right now and not even blink. And you know I did. <laughs> yeah, challenge and I did, accepted. And I did. You did because I I actually just watched your story right before you got on here. You said you were eating uh, a box of Twinkies or twenty some Twinkies. Twinkies, and then yeah. and I was and I was just telling Justin I was like I was like yo Bill's got me laughing because he's just he's just talking as he's walking and he goes oh by the way uh, Bernie Spears birthday happy birthday let's get through this together and I just started dying. Can, by the way, can, all, you can you believe that she's thirty nine? We're all pulling for you. Can you believe that she's thirty nine? Like I thought she was fifty. <laughs> she's only 39 I mean, well she's gone through a lot it's that shit's crazy that's that's beyond me that's that's something i couldn't even fathom right you know that whole that whole thing but yeah you know i got i gotta add the entertainment factor it gave hey, me man. serious all the time you do you do a good job you do a good job of that Thanks. so i appreciate well, uh, that we uh you got me watching so i don't always like to watch everyone's stories but i'm i'm a viewer so you can count me in your book but um i appreciate that to go on a well, let's cheers to you. Yeah, let's, first, let's cheers. Cheers. Thank you for coming on the burn down. We appreciate you, brother. Salute. Thanks for having me. Salute. Salute. And, Jen Don. Jen Don. Jen Don. Prost. So we used to be a, uh, a bad boy, a little strong right there. I gotta give me oh, a little. It's good. It's like give me uh, a little. No, it's good. Give me a little punch. You gotta it's get like, you uh, know you, uh, when, when tasting, you know the first taste of everything of anything. Uh, if you haven't had anything, you know, I, I always used to tell people, you know, just, just give it a minute. You know, you take that first sip and yeah. and you coat your palate and your palate's got to get active, acclimated to, you know, what you're tasting. That's and, a good point. Uh, yeah, I like that. That is a know, good point. And, and once you get acclimated to it, then, you know, everything kind of gets relaxed and, and, you know, maybe add some water, maybe not, you know, whatever, 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 whatever floats, floats your, boat. your boat. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, your palate's got to get acclimated to certain things uh you know and then after it relaxes and then you're like oh then i start tasting different shit and you know it, it becomes great or it's horrible you know everybody's different oh, that's a good point i never i never actually thought of that because there's been times where i have drank whiskey or bourbon and the first initial sip is like poof, like right in your face kicking like, me in the face yeah <laughs> kick me in the fucking face and so uh, then after a while it's good see, yeah you can see it in my reviews my you know like the first sip i'm like Ugh. you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> just get through it. Just get through the first sip, and then you know you get a little tuned off, and and uh, and everything starts. I, my favorite fucking my favorite phrase is flowing harmoniously across flowing the palate, like dancing. I like know? it. That's good stuff. And yeah, the, you can yeah. always see like how quickly, especially if you have one or two or more than one, you can always see how quickly the first glass goes, and then the next yeah. glass goes a little bit quicker. 
And then if you get another glass, it goes a little bit fat because oh, yeah. it's just it's like at that point. I was I was uh I recently just got engaged and uh Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And uh my father whipped out the Chinese whiskey, the Hibiki. And um uh, yeah. so the first the first glass, you know, it was the same thing. It was like uh, a little rough, and then by the end of the night, the whole bottle was gone. I was like, damn, that's some fucking good ass whiskey right there. And uh, yep. it's so it just it just proves your point. I never thought about like you kind of have to get a uh, get a little involved and get it get it going, get it with the palate and get it started up. So yep, exactly. But um, we uh we w- we want to ask you about you know the the Bender Stash show um because we were in a like a cigar chat I don't know a year or so ago we were like in that wow. little Instagram chat we always be talking about our posts and stuff like that and just talking about cigars and um. You're talking about the binder st- uh, the binder stash and something about going on for ne- you were almost going on Netflix or something like that. Like, how did the whole binder stash start? Like, how did you get into that? Like, where has it led you today? Like, what's the whole spiel? Well, um, you know, I, w- I was a uh, you know a bartender and, and you know for years and, and uh, you know it, it it started you know officially bartending you know in '99 when I come come I came up from college. I was I was going to college in Philly. And, you know, <laughs> party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you got to come home. <laughs> you know, it's like, whatever. And, uh, you know, I started bartending. And, you know, and, and you have all these ridiculous labels like Bar Chef and Mixologist and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and you know, it, I what happens is, is like, okay, so so when you first start bartending, you do shots and, and gin and tonics and, and, and Jack and Cokes and and shots of Jaeger and, and uh, Bud Lights and Miller Lights and Heinekens and you know, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, you do that for a couple of years and you get the speed and, you know, you're a slinger. That's the slinger phase. And then <laughs> you, after that, you move into this. I moved into this uh, next phase uh, of, you know, researching herbs and, and, and different uh, um fruits and freaking vegetables and yeah, vegetables literally vegetables <laughs> and and uh 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 and then you you work on flavor profiles and, and you become a mixologist after you master the art of slinging you become a mixologist and then after you do that for a certain amount of time that's when you become a bartender and, and uh um so that's when you start concentrating on something that that really moves you you know some people you know gravitate towards tequila or rum or mezcal or you know anything gin uh and i you know i went from bartending to running bars to uh uh consulting and uh uh training uh bartenders you know up and down the eastern seaboard and then you start doing spirit seminars for corporate workshops and and uh uh then you start designing bars and and building bars and and then you know doing your own thing and, and all that stuff and and you know, like when I was a kid, uh, you know, you'd sneak the old granddad out of, out of my grandfather's whiskey cabinet in, you know, the early 90s. And, and uh, you know, then you get to college and it's like Jack and Coke and, and uh, Crown and Gingers and, and shit like that. And then, you know, you're, you start, you know, acquiring tastes for certain things. And, and uh, you know, whiskey, I really gravitated towards whiskey. Uh, you know, first American whiskey, and then you you know you have to broaden your horizons, and then you get the Japanese and, and Irish and and uh, uh, you know other other countries that now are making stuff like uh, Holland. They're making like Dutch rye and and, and stuff like you know New Zealand and India uh, is making wow. single malts, and uh, so I, I I gained this knowledge, and uh, you know I'm I'm constantly learning every day, you know more stuff. You know you're always learning. You know, it's just like golf, you know, you're, 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 you're good. You, you get great. And you, you know, you hone in on skills and, and you become better, but you're never like the best because you're always learning stuff. And so now I'm at CWS, uh, you know, which I talked about before. And, you know, this, this one chick comes in and she sits down at the bar. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that she will film, uh, Emily, and she's my girlfriend now of, of almost four years and, and you know she's a writer director producer freaking uh uh camera expert blah 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 this and that and you know she sits there and, and she's watching me you know because it's not i'm not slinging drinks anymore now people are coming to sit in this bar 
that I created it and it's six or seven seats. And, uh, I sit there and I talk to these people about, you know, what's your flavor? You know, what do you like? You know, what don't you like? And, and, you know, I talk to people for 15, 20 minutes before I even offer them the kind of whiskey that I, I feel that they would like. And, you know, I go into the history and, and the flavor notes and blah, blah, blah. And she's watching me do this. She's like, why don't we start a, sh- why don't we, why don't we film a show? You know? And I'm like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> that shit, that shit's never going to sell. I was like, and I, you know, cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm the kind of guy where like you get a, like a rut, like you, you get a groove and you're comfortable in it. And even though there's something that might be better, you know, taking that leap of faith into something that's unknown, it, uh, it kind of gives me anxiety. And you know, it still does to this day. And, you know, finally, um, uh, where it came down to is we drove from here to New Jersey. We drove to Rumson, New Jersey, because she had something going on there. There was a hurricane that was coming. I forget which one it was. Uh, and <laughs> forget and which she, one it was. She, she, I forget which one it was, honestly. And she, she's like pounding it in my head, like, yo, we should really start the show. And I'm like, just shut up. I'm driving, you know? <laughs> and then on the way back, we actually, because I had to open up CWS. And so on the way back, we hit the hurricane in Georgia. And like, I pull over on the side of the road. And I'm like, she said something. I'm like, fine, let's just do it. Like, let's just do it. We'll do the, we'll do the show, shoot it. We'll shoot the proof of concept, the pilot, and, um, you know, let's see what happens. So okay, I, we'll I, do I, it I live. literally like took, took the let's lead. Let's do it right here on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it right here on the side of the road. I'll just get out. Sixty mile an hour winds. I'm hydroplaning at fifteen miles an hour. Let me just get out and start talking about whiskey right now. <laughs> just, just, just film with your phone. I don't care. So. So, you know, you know, then, then it, it, it becomes this, you know, you know, originally the concept was cocktails and the history of them and some whiskey. But then after I talked about the whiskey during the proof of concept, I was like, you know what? Screw the cocktails. I just want to talk about whiskey because that makes me happy. And so then it's like, hey, we get, we get, you know, the funding, we get a private investor that, that funds the funds, funds the bill for the whole season. And we end up doing like, uh, 15 weeks uh like 22 different states uh 30 distilleries a couple bars peppered in there we were at steel speakeasy uh he's that guy is awesome he he's in the music industry and blah 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 we we just literally had a blast and it's more like a anthony bourdain uh but in the whiskey you know category and, and the whiskey culture it was it wasn't like how many bottles of whiskey do you make a year? And, and you know, how many people uh, come through your distillery to visit? You know, yeah. it was more like, a, like, how are you feeling today? You know, let's have some whiskey. And we literally sit there and we have an unscripted just conversation about, you know, where they came from. And, you know, just like two people meeting for the first time. And, and it actually, it, it turned out amazing. So, you know, I, that's pretty much about all I could say about it without, uh, Giving too much uh, away. Uh, breaking my my uh, you know uh, my contracts and stuff to shut my mouth. Yeah. Uh, until the first season comes out, but uh, it, it 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 turned out to be awesome. And you know, during that before that before we started, they're like uh, Emily's like you know we need to get you uh, camera ready because I've never been in front of a camera before, and <laughs> I actually was, but I was an idiot. I was like, oh yes, this whiskey is great, and blah blah blah. And I was like, what am I doing with my hands? <laughs> I, like I was an idiot in front of the cat. Like I didn't know what was going on. And um, so I was comfortable behind the bar and I was comfortable on the golf course. So he, she was like, let's do whiskey reviews on the golf course and I'll film them and we'll get acclimated in front of the camera. And I was like, that's a great idea. So that's how what is now the Bill Binder show that I do whiskey reviews on. Uh, that's how that started. And, you know, that that actually took off. And uh, that's great. You know, that's th- that's where we are right now. I love it. I, my favorite, my favorite part is right in the beginning. You're in the car and you're blasting some kind of '90s hip hop, and you're rapping all the lyrics, and you go right to the golf course. Right to the golf course. Absolutely. That gets me fired up every single time. Yeah. So, so speak. Speaking of golf, and I, I've seen, you know, I've seen some of the, the golf videos. We saw the trick shot from the the top of your top of your kitchen oh. counter, flipping the thing, oh. the, the toilet, toilet paper. paper. I mean, we'll we'll post a little clip right there, but it's a. Uh, that was pretty impressive. So, so how long have you actually been playing golf? Like, how did you get into golf? Because we're both golfers. We're both your average golfers. You know, we're we're we just go out and have a good time. 
Um, but I mean, it's, it's, that's all it comes down to. You have a good time. But how long have you been playing? Because it looks like, I mean, from what I can tell, is you're not the average golfer. Yeah. I mean, you're a little, a little bit above, a couple steps above the average golfer. How long have you been playing? So, so uh, I'm 40 now. Uh, let's say four years old. So about 36 years I've been playing golf. Wow! wow. Since four years old. But, yeah, but but I I come from a baseball family. So my my dad, uh, my dad was just like genius straight a student you know growing up and and he went to princeton university graduated catcher of the decade in 72 broke all the records in babe ruth baseball in the 60s still holds the single season batting average record in uh babe ruth baseball you know still today uh he he batted like 738 or something crazy like that for a single season batting average record and then he went on to play for the phillies and the giants and you know, my mom's dad, he was in World War II and, and you know, like illegal their own when, when all the chick, the, all the women started playing and all the guys in Major League Baseball went over to fight for the war. Like my, my, my mom's dad played with them in like military ball, you know, overseas in Europe. Oh, shit. And uh, so I got baseball in my family and, um, you know, I, w- I was a good baseball player too. And I wasn't allowed to touch a golf club during baseball season because you know you have a you have a golf swing during baseball season you're popping everything up and yeah you know it's or or vice versa you're slicing everything on the golf course and and uh um uh when my my father passed a couple years ago and uh you know one of the last things i said to my dad was you know I, like i looked at him and i was like you son of a bitch I was like, if you never put a baseball bat in my fucking hands and you, and you, you kept me on the golf constantly, then, you know, I'd probably be way more ahead making way more money playing <laughs> golf for a living than, you know, I, I actually attempted to play professional golf in, uh, you know, the late 2000s. That's why I moved to Florida. But, but yeah, I, I, I've been playing golf for, you know, a better, better part of 36 years. What is it about golf that you like? Like what? Brand, well, like- I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a team player. You know, first and foremost, you know, that, that baseball gave me that that uh, like respect. You know, and and the the uh, the ability to you know cheer my my teammates on and and be positive for them. Uh, golf's like you either do it by yourself or you or you don't, and you know you don't need a, uh, uh, somebody else to to uh, practice. And when I came home from college, I would train during the day, you know, at the range or on the golf course. And then I would bark at night. That's how I made my living. And, um, uh, the fact that you can always get better, you can always get better. And, you know, you go out on the golf course and you could hit every fairway and miss every green, or you can hit, miss every fairway and hit every green and you putt like shit. And then the next day you put lights out. And, you know, when you put those four things together, you know, you, you come up with this, this beautiful symphony of, of rhythm and, and, uh, uh, it's kind of like a serenity, you know, when you go like literally like mind wise lights out, uh, when you're on autopilot and, you know, it's just like, you can always strive to be better. You can always strive to be better. You can always get better, you know, and and you practice smart. And, and, you know, I love that about golf. I, I, I absolutely love it. Plus, I was a wiry little fucker, and you know I was hitting it longer than than most people uh, at a hundred what fifty pounds when I was nineteen years old, one hundred and sixty <laughs> pounds, and you know I had a little advantage. So, you know, most most of the, in my twenties, people are like, "Oh, we're going to Cabo for spring break," or you know, "Let's go to freaking the Bahamas." Like, I didn't do any of that shit. I would practice for fourteen hours a day, and then I would go bartend at night, and like there was never a day off for me. And and. I, I love that. You know, like you put in the hard work and you see the results. So, you know, that's, that's basically golf. To me. Love I mean, it. I like, I like I how that. you said, cause you know, one of the things I love about golf too is like, is where you'd mentioned you're, there's nobody like in team sports and we both play team sports and I love team sports, but the thing about team sports is there's always somebody, the other team per, trying to prevent you from doing something, whether yeah. it's basketball, baseball, hockey, football, soccer, there's always a defense, but with golf, there is no defense, and you well, never I mean, the, the golf course is the golf, the golf course, course. But that's my point: is that you're never playing, and you're not even playing against somebody else. Like even in a tournament, when it's all like you're you're not playing against the person that you're with. 
it's both of you playing against the course, mm-hmm. and it's whoever right. can play the course the best. best. Um, so that I mean, that's that's the greatest thing. It's not like there's somebody in front of you trying to prevent you from swinging. It's like no, it's it's you against the course, and like you said, when you put all those things together, and we've you know, I guess we're not we're average golfers, but we have holes where. When you just when you hit a beautiful drive and you land it perfectly in the fairway, and then the next shot you just you pick it so clean it flies up there, it Fucking drops five foot it. from the hole, and then you sink like you sink like a five footer, or ten footer, or fifteen footer for birdie, and all three of those shots just fall into place. You feel like a million fucking bucks. Yeah. You're like, oh, you're like I'm going more, pro. More, more, like I love it's it. More addicting. It's more addicting than cocaine. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's like you know, and then you're like, you could have a shittiest round and have that one perfect hole, and you're like. Well, if I practice some more, then maybe I could do have that for two holes and then five holes and then nine holes and then 15 holes, you know, and like that. It, it, it's those shots that just, that just keep you keep you coming oh, back. Yeah, no doubt. No and doubt. even like when you get like, let's say you said you miss a fairway and like, you, let's say you shank one into the woods. And then you're like, oh, fuck. Now now you're sitting in the woods, and it's not just a normal approach shot. You're not 110 out. You're like, all right, I'm just going to pop this one and drop. Yep. You're like, you know, 100 out, 150 out. You're in the tree. You're like, you're like all right, I got to figure this out. Let me punch. And then you punch one out, and it rolls up onto the green. You're like, oh, I'm, go- I'm golden. That's good. It's such a rush when you when you get creative and, and you figure out those shots. Yeah, I mean. So I, was, I, uh, I think on, it was Bill. like 2007. I turned pro. That's why I moved down to Florida. It's the only reason why I moved to Florida. Um, and you know, I, I like I struggled real bad because you know you, it's, you got the skills, but guess what? If you don't have the mental game, then you know it's just like whatever. Because you can hit 133 foot putts when you know there's nobody around, but when you have a 103 foot or when you have one three foot putt, that's either gonna uh, you know dictate whether you make rent or you know you, you gotta mm-hmm. go back to bartend for another month. You know that that uh that really affected me, and you know my mental game was not there like at all. You know practice rounds, I'll kill everybody in practice rounds. The range range game, my range game was fucking like untouchable. But you know when it was funny, my first professional golf tournament, you know we played in like 30 mile an hour wind, and it was a short course. And, you know, I was cool. I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And like the minute you get on the first team, they're like, now playing out of Princeton, New Jersey, Bill Binder, you're like, oh shit, this is for real. Oh, this is for real now. And like this like, shot counts. <laughs> and, and literally, it took you like two or three years. And, and uh, you know, uh, I, I couldn't figure it out. You know, it's just like, oh, let me pop some freaking Xanax to see if that works. I can calm down or, oh, look, there's some Ritalin, some some antipsychotic. Like maybe that'll work. And, you know, you're just like looking for a legal edge, you know, but but you're just looking for an edge. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the last tournament that I won – uh, which was the, one of the last tournaments that I ever played professionally. Uh, you know, I was winning by like two strokes. I was two strokes ahead of the, the guy in first place. And, and uh, I blocked my drive on 18 and it's on the car path. And I got 165 yards and I had this window that was probably like five by five, you know, 30 feet in the, these thick ass trees right in front of me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just, you know, I, I, I kind of let go for that tournament i'm like yeah, i'm gonna hit this i'm gonna pick it off the freaking uh the car path because if i move it you know either way then i'm screwed and i'm blocked out and i picked this ball and i fucking slipped and fell on my ass and i'm sitting on my ass with the club on my shoulder and i like hit a moon ball and we're just sitting there like my playing parts like where the fuck where did it go and it, it hit the green and spun back like 30 feet oh, and i had this four footer to win by a stroke one stroke and uh, or win by two strokes and uh you know it's like okay i got a four footer to win my first professional golf tournament and i hit it and it and it went whoop and it rimmed rimmed up and down in and out and came back to me and now i have a three footer to win and i was like fucking shaking sweating i I took i went off the ball stepped off the ball like three times and i finally hit it and it just went whoop and it went in and i won and and you know uh you know, the, the first person I called, I almost got in a car accident leaving the golf course. I called my dad and I was like, yo, dad, he's like, how'd you do it? Like, I got emotional. I started crying. I was like, we did it. Like, we did it. You know, and, and uh, uh, and that was it. And then, you know, I tried to, tried to, um, uh, you know, come back to it. And it's just like, I was just mentally exhausted at that point, you know, because it gets to a point where like you play your best and then 
people come in and they're seven strokes better than you. Like shoot 66 in a tournament and a, uh, shots, there's five people that shot 60. And then, you know, reality hits and you're like, well, you know, I'm good and I'm good enough. And I gave it my all and I followed my dream and, and maybe I'm just not good enough for this stuff. And, uh, you know, that's when I made a, uh, 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 a, uh, command decision to, uh, you know, retire and give it up and, you know, pursue something else that wasn't so strenuous on the brain. It's the fucking, I'm, like, I had a full head of hair when I started playing golf. <laughs> now I'm fucking, I shaved my head. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, now you get to play, a, now you're doing like the whiskey reviews on the golf course. And so now you get to bring in like two of your passions and cigars, a third to bring that all. And now you have the TV show and it's like, so sometimes things happen for a reason. And now, yeah. you know, you left, you tried that, you left it. I mean, you won a tournament yeah, as not, a pro. So I'm like, that's, that's not many people who can say that. Like that's, that's awesome. So you can say yeah, like, yeah, it, I turned pro and I won. Yeah. It was, Absolutely. yeah, it was, it was different that, that, that weekend. It was a two day tournament. It was like, you know, the first round was like, it was pouring rain and I left all my rain gear at home. And, and I was like, you know what? I was like, I kind of just kind of, like, I, like I said, it was weird. I was like, you know, you know, fuck it. You know, it's, I'm, I'm just going to play. I'm not going to worry about anything. And, you know, I, I play well and, and okay. I, I, I fight, you know, to, to play another day and, and, uh, or I don't play well and, and I'm not going to worry about it. And, you know, I'll come back tomorrow and, and I'll still play and, and I'll just try my hardest because, yeah. you know, when it comes down to it, you know, especially in tournament golf, you know, uh, you know, whatever happens, you know, during the round, you know, the last five holes are what makes it count, you know, and, and, you know, I just had that mentality and, and, uh, it worked that weekend, I guess you could say. Hey. Oh, that's, it was that's that, a cool story, It was that though. simple. Yeah. Sometimes, but I, I like how you said it. It's like the mentality. It's when you get to like the level of those, you know, like Tiger and Justin Thomas and, and, uh, John Rahm and all those guys, Dustin Johnson, the level, the men, the mental game is just, out it's it's off the charts, Be- yeah. and and a perfect example. And I know he, he he didn't win, and he didn't he didn't place or anything. But Tiger Woods in the Masters, when he went on, I forgot what hole. I think it was the thirteenth hole, and he 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 got a ten on a par three. He shot yeah, it was a ten. A, it was a twelve, right? It, or twelve? It was it was or was it the twelfth hole? Yeah, par three. And, and he got I'm he shot sorry. a ten, right? Like absolute yeah. bomb the hole, but. From the thirteenth hole on, he only had one par, and the rest were birdies. Yeah, and it's like it he just blew it off. I'm like, yeah, you, like you know how much mental like strength you golf. have to have to do that to just be like, I got a ten on the last hole. We'd be fucking pissed, like motherfucker. We wouldn't be able to shake it off. Yeah. But he's just like, no, nah, fuck it, new hole, boom, birdie, 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 birdie. I'm like, oh my god, this guy is unreal. Yeah, you just, bring it, just bring it to it's a, it gets to a point where it's like, uh, you know, growing up and you know you have fun. You know, as a kid, like, oh, I'm just going to try to carry this 250 yard water hazard to the green on the par five. And <laughs> you I'm only drive it 220, it. and you're like, I'm going to carry 250. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's like I'm a kid, and you're, you're having fun as a kid, and, and and it got to the point where, uh, it wasn't fun for me anymore to play competitive golf, and it got to be a job. And mm-hmm. once it becomes a job, then your whole mental, you know, game, it changes, and you're like, mm-hmm. I got to mm-hmm. make. I got to make my cell phone pillar. I got to make rent and be like, don't fuck it up. And like the minute you say that you just, you're screwed for the, you know, for the duration. And, uh, Takes you know, I, you know yeah. now I'm, I'm having fun again and you know, so I'm, I'm hitting better shots and I'm actually playing the best golf that I've ever played in my life. And, uh, it, it, you just sit back, I sit back and I, I, uh, I, I look at it like, man, if I just try to have more fun and stop, you know, taking shit so seriously, then maybe it would have went a different way, but you can't live your life on babies. You know, you tried it and it didn't work out and you know, then you move on to the next thing and you try to crush that, which yeah. is where I am right now. So, so where do, where do cigars come in place now? Were you always a cigar guy? Where is it after golf, during golf? Like where are they coming to play in your life now? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, inhale, I, I, inhale, I, I, I inhale all my cigars. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was a two pack smoker a day and, uh, you know, when I was in the hospitality industry and, and you know, I just kind of carried over the cigars, but, um, you know, cigarettes for me were more of a, you know, the little 42s, whatever they were, you just fucking, 
like that just to calm down it was more like a uh uh you know kind of like an escape and a, like an anxiety like stress user yeah uh you know when i was 15 you know I was, my bunch of friends and i were at my buddy's house and we got a, a pack of black and miles and i inhaled the entire black and mild and i threw up for freaking hours oh, after that. and that was kind of like my first experience um but then you know you get into golf you get older you know you get older friends that you play with and, and they're like, oh, have a cigar. And, you know, it, it became – it's it's not a rush thing to alleviate something. It's more of a – it's kind of like whiskey, you know. You you uh, appreciate what you're smoking. Uh, you, you take mental notes of, of the flavors that are going on, uh, the, the, the strength. And, um, you know, it, it kind of got very serious for me, you know, maybe about 15 years ago. And you know you buy a fuck you know buy your first humidor and you're like what do I do do I unwrap the cigars and put them in there? <laughs> That's a I big do? question we you always know? get. Yeah, you like you have you don't know and you know learn from from what other people say and and you know you kind of do your own thing and and uh, you get to a point where it's like okay I like this and I like these cigars and, and you know is that okay and then you're like fuck it I don't care if anybody thinks this is not okay I like what I like and that's it and that's basically where I am right now I like what I like. And if you don't like it, then that's fine because, you know, like whiskey, everybody has their own palate and everybody has their own opinion. And it's not necessarily wrong, but it's just a different opinion. And, yeah. you know, you got to take that all in stride. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's what we always say. It doesn't matter if you like a $3 cigar or a $30 cigar. You know, if I like the $30 cigar and Justin likes the $3 cigar, I have no right to say, man, that cigar fucking sucks, bro. Because yeah. he likes right. it. You you're, like, you're like, hey, I don't like it. Yeah. Right. That's it. That's the first thing we tell everybody, too. Like. Smoke what you like. Or go, don't even look at the price. Like, if you like it, smoke it. Even, same thing with wine. Same thing with beer. Same thing with, with whiskey. Like, just just enjoy it. If you enjoy it, then nobody has any right to tell you yep. it's it's bad. Right. Exactly. You do your own thing. That's for sure. And, I mean, the people that tell you what cigars you should like and shouldn't like, those are the people that you stay far away from and you go one ear and out the other and just say... Thanks a lot. And just yep. walk away. Because, I mean, I find people in the cigar community, 99% of them are friendly, you know, insightful, or willing to help you, or willing to talk to you. Um, yeah. You know, like yourself. Any and, sticks. Yeah. The, yeah, exactly. You know, people who just, just because you you talk to them on Instagram or you say something about their picture, they'll be like, hey, you know, can I just send you some cigars? You're like, what? I don't even know you. You live in Nebraska. They're like, <laughs> yeah, I just want to send you some cigars. And I'm like, all right, sure. And then I return, you know, return their favor and you kind of have like a social media cigar buddy. Then it's kind of, you know, cause yeah, like it's, yourself, it's, camaraderie. Bill, it's a hundred percent. It's a camaraderie. Yeah, cause yeah. like, I know if we, and we've came across people that we've met over Instagram and like, I know if we were ever, when we were cross paths down in Florida, it'd be like, you know, we've been boys since we were, since high school, like yeah. it won't even be weird. Like we just get right into it. And that's how we find exactly. a lot of these people we talk to on Instagram at, at events and we go to different States. It's like, we, we kind of just pick up where we left off on Instagram, like we were making jokes, and it's not like the awkward first meet. Right. It's a really weird feeling, and it's a really weird thing social media brings, but it's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So we're at a point in the episode, and we're going to, uh, we're going to, this is the quote of the week. Okay. Yeah. And Eric's got a quote. That he wants to test your knowledge, and this is kind of branching off into uh, another topic we wanted to talk about, and that's music. So Eric right. is going to say the quote of the week, and the question is, can you guess the artist that this is from? So we, so I know, we've talked before that, you know, big, big 90s hip hop, right? Hip -hop. So I'm thinking, uh -huh. I'm trying to think of a, a song lyric that I liked from the 90s. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's see. Make it the quote of the week, and let's see, you know, what Bill thinks, and, what, and if he knows it or not. So the quote of the week is, "I'd rather live enormous than live dormant." <laughs> oh man! I'll give you a hint. He is from New York. Wow! <laughs> not much of a hint, uh, but not I mean, much of a hint. No, I'd rather live enormous than dormant. And it's a song you definitely know. I, you know, I, I, I would have to either say, 
it's either Biggie or Nas. Oh, it is. <laughs> he's in that realm. If you think Biggie, Jay Z, and someone else, Big L. I mean, oh, no, you just I, I just said. I think just I just said I actually just said another lyric. It's Jay Z. It's Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is who's the best. M- who's what the best MC? Big, Biggie, Jay Z, and Nas. Um, that is "Can I Live" oh, there you go. by Biggie uh, by Jay Z. Oh, there you go. "Can okay. I Live" by Jay Z. So there's, that's another song lyric. It goes, "Who's the best MC? Biggie, Jay Z, or Nas?" I forgot who says that. That's why that just came out. But uh, so it just J- sound like that. We just gave him the answer. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But anyways, but yeah. So it's it's from Jay Z. It's from Jay Z. Uh, "Can I Live?" But um, I wanted to get your your take. Uh, well, first of all, I love that quote because it means, you know, it says a lot just about life and how you can live your life. And you, I think you can relate, you know, as you said earlier in the in the interview, you were in the fast lane, you were living big. So, you know, you'd rather live enormous than live dormant because you don't have no regrets. You have a lot of good of memories and you got a lot of good uh, learning moments. So I think that quote can relate to a lot of people, especially, yeah. you know, us. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. like also like uh, to add to what Eric is saying, where you said um, uh, you don't live life with maybes. Right, and that's like the same thing. Is I, I'd rather you'd rather go out, do it, and say that you tried it, mm-hmm. than to be dormant and say oh, maybe I maybe I could have done that, maybe I could have done this. Yep. Yeah, you don't live life by maybes. Right, exactly. So you know yeah. how you know I you know my first my first uh, um you know introduction into hip hop was I was in fourth grade, Miss Bordenti's class was Nelly Country Grammar, and I ever heard Country Grammar <laughs> on the radio. I thought like that was the best song ever i had no idea what it meant my mom was like floored when i played it on the radio but how how did you get into hip-hop you know who are your favorite artists you know like what is it about 90s hip-hop that cultivates you know that gets you going well you know uh, you know i grew up uh my 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 family owned a bar and a restaurant growing up like in, in 1985 i was i might be a little older than you guys in 1985 i had my karate kid like gi on outfit you know uh, you know miyagi do karate yeah like white outfit and i was like behind the bar like like hand washing bar uh glasses for my dad it was just like child labor probably now and they just, they <laughs> but in the 80s every anything went you know yep. so it was like ride my hot wheels around the freaking bar and just just pull up and park and then just wash some glassware play 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 with the piano guy that did the piano you know blah blah, blah whatever um i can't tell you and I'm gonna have to to make a guess that you know I was around like the cooks and, and all that stuff. My first uh, cassette that I ever you know personally owned was "Raising Hell," "Raising Hell" by Run DMC, and uh, yeah. you know the, the, you know that was a good one. And and, and uh, you know I I kind of got into it you know in the early eighty or in the mid eighties, um, but. Uh, you know, my, my father was a, you know, he was born in 49 and, uh, you know, he was, a, a like, a, a, a like an R and B, like, you know, earth, wind and fire and, and, and you know, James oh, Brown, great and, group, know, funk, great group, the funk, you know, the temptations yep. and, and, you know, obviously Frank Sinatra, like, you know, which is different category all, all on itself, but you know, like they would, they would move the coffee table out of the, uh, um, the, the living room and they would have dance parties and I would dance with them to, to you know, all this different music and like the four top or the, the four seasons and yeah. four tops, and, you know, yep, all those, yep. all those bands. Uh, and you know, funk, I, I I'm an average, you know, I, I like hip hop. I, I love hip hop, nineties hip hop, but you know, I love every genre of music, uh, you know, to, to an extent. And, and I'm, I, I can pretty much talk about music for hours, but Same. Same. You know, uh, I you know I'm sitting in one of my oldest friends' uh, living rooms, and uh, you know, I, I uh, her, his dad puts on uh, you know Band of Gypsies, uh, freaking um, Jimi Hendrix. And, you know, it's like the whole white white man can't jump, and, yep, and you yep, know later yep. in my life, it's like I'm like Billy Ho, and like you can't hear Jimmy. I'm like I can hear Jimmy. I can hear Jimmy. No, no, I, I can hear Jimmy. Oh, I listened to like I listened to like Machine Gun, and I was like, God damn, you know, I like I love music, and and you know the thing about it is that no matter what you listen to, it's like music always brings people together. Like no matter what race you are, no matter how old you are, you know, uh, it, it always brings you know music together. And you know, then the '90s hit, and you know, Tribe Called Quest, which is one of my top five favorite you know hip hop groups ever. Yep. You know, comes out and the scenario comes out and. 
you know, I went to private Catholic school my whole life. So it's a bunch of fucking kids in, 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 in like, you know, Oxford shirts with, you know, plaid ties, you know, in, in the, you know, during recess, you know, out on the playground and we're sitting in a circle and we're like, you know, you get this first, you get this first to scenario. And like, we all just, oh, you know, sick. as I combine on the juice from the mind, you know, it's like, everybody's got their own verse. And, and like, you know, nineties hip hop to me is, is it's like your storytellers, you know, and you never forget yep. those certain verses, you know, like, like New York state of mind, like Nas, like, uh, I'm an addict for sneakers, twenties of Buddha and bitches for beepers, yep. bitches with beepers, you know, like, <laughs> like there's like certain things that just like stick out, you know, in your head. Uh, like I like a brown, yellow, Puerto Rican, a Haitian, you know, like name is five dog, like all that stuff, you know, and, and like the lyrics and the beat and, and the actual music, like the samples from the shit that my dad listened to Absolutely. that these hip hop albums, you know, artists, you know, took samples from and, and like Wu Tang and like, my God, Black Moon, uh, Helter Skelter, uh, uh, um, Smith and Wesson, like those, those guys, like, like all of them just kind of like brought that my dad's genre into like this genre that like I grew up listening to, but it was storytellers like Nas and, and like, like all of like Jay Z and, and, you know, Biggie and, I'm not a really big hit, uh, Tupac fan. Like I didn't like West Coast rap at all, and you know to this day I can honestly say like I still don't like it. And uh, it, it just it's just like the rhythm and the flow and the storytelling all combined. Like it's just like it's crazy. Like, it's you the just best. Listen to this one 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 like line or one lyric, Busta, and you're like you have that like look on your face like god like that's just ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> like a dungeon dragon <laughs> yeah I know exactly like, what he's talking about and it's like you almost it's almost like a i always it's like the stank face like you smelled something nasty you're like oh my god like what a lyric yeah, yeah. oh and, that's the, and, and you rewind exactly. you're like i gotta hear that again oh or even like even like the any like i do that today like like bass lines from from you know like like funk like uh, like the average white band and, and like the meters are one of my favorite funk bands of all time. It might be my favorite funk band of all time. The JBs, uh, you know, James Brown, you know, like, like all of these tower of power, like all of these old bands that my father introduced me to that became integrated with nineties hip hop with the sampling. And, and, you know, it's just like, Holy shit. And like, I got older you know, it got to a certain point, maybe like 10, 15 years ago when I didn't really like move away from hip hop, but I was like, where did this shit come from? Where did this shit come from? And then you start, you know, getting into like the funk of the sixties and the seventies. You're like, Oh my God. Like some of the samples that like Wu Tang and, and tribe called quest and, you know, uh, uh, um, like even like EPMD and, 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 uh, yep. De La Soul, you know, like all the De La Soul, like they, they, they like, started the whole like sampling shit you know from from old from old music and like like man it's just like it's just like surges inside of you you know there was a soul thing and you know my my friends and i always you know get into it you know it's like i was always a fan of like the, the fish and and the grateful dead and like santana and like you know all those rock bands you know yep. i'm a fan of fucking uh uh, Twisted Sister and Van Halen and like David Lee Roth is like one of my favorite fucking like front men's like ever and 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 you know it's like what 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 moves you what compels you to like do a little like mm, mm, like yeah. that you're like, oh yeah you know it's like it comes from like uh, from all sides and you know it, there's people that get it in this world and people that don't get it you know like you hear you hear the beat or you hear the you know and the people that get it they're like. You're like holy shit! Like yeah, like listen no, to that. You hear shit. Jimmy, like, you know? or you can't hear Jimmy? Cause, cause the, <laughs> to be, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what to be honest. Because to be honest, I was I was honestly because I was trying to find a quote right before we got on, and I was trying to find. I know Tribe Called Quest is like your your favorite, so I was trying to find a quick uh, Tribe Called Quest quote, and not right. to you know not to expose Justin, but he's like, "Who's Tribe Called Quest?" And I'm like, "What." I'm like, are you serious? So I played. I'm like, you don't know. Here we go, yo. Here we. Go. And he's like, no. So I played it, and you just said like, as soon as you hear the beat, you just get your head rocking. So as soon as I played it, Justin's like, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> bobbing to it. I'm like, this is exactly. this is it. And you know what's interesting exactly. too is it's like it's interesting you say how how funk, a lot of the 
the like the the 90s hip hop and the rap artists sampled uh, music from the 60s and 70s of funk. And now that I'm thinking of it, when you listen to funk and you listen to 90s hip hop, uh-huh. they have the same tempo and both genres get you bouncing a little bit. Yeah. Like when you listen to 90s hip hop, you you're 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 bouncing in the car, right? You're bobbing your head. When you listen to funk, there's that same backbone, like the, the drum beat and the bass line. It's got that funk, and you're bouncing into it. That's why yeah. I always call funk is like wedding music. Because you put that on, it's got such a good tempo that it's not too fast, it's not too slow, and you're just bouncing, yeah. you're vibing. It's like, it just, it, like you said, it you hits you or it doesn't hit you. What's that? You're right, exactly. And you have a smile on your face the whole time you're doing it. Like, it, either, it, uh-huh. it. And then, like you said, you, you said uh, certain different genres will ignite different parts of you. Like you said, Van Halen. Like I love Van Halen. I've been on a huge, um, just like a hard rock, like that '80s and the '90s rock uh, for working out. So I put on Van Halen, and it's like Hot for Teacher comes on, and like Panama, and, and it's just like it gets you like ah, it yep. gets you, it You're gets like, you like fired up, and it's just like like when, when fucking punch a wall. Yeah, like the drum, <laughs> like the drum intro, like you're like ah, let's go, like I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> you know, yep. like it's because I grew up. I grew up listening to 90s and 2000s, and that's all I listened to throughout uh, like middle school, high school, and then college. And then my parents always brainwashed me with the 60s, the 70s, 80s. And when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't appreciate it and until I moved away. And then I heard uh, one song by The Four Tops. I lived in Atlanta for a little bit, and one song by The Four Tops came on... Um, what song was it? Was That's uh, a super bad song. It was... Uh, no, it was The Four Tops. I Need Your Loving. Baby, I need you. And I was like... Wow, this yep. like this brings me back to like my family. And ever since I moved away, I took so much uh-huh. more appreciation for all the Motown, the mm. the classic rock. It's like like, Motown, dude. It's come on. It's and that's and, mean, honestly, like, and honestly my ahead, like I uh I just did my Spotify analytic thing. Like it, it yeah. gives you your most rated or most listened to songs. And right. last year it was all hip hop. This year it's all classic rock, Sinatra, like just like like ninety five percent of the the top hundred songs are all like oldies, and I'm like, you know, you can't go wrong. So once I discovered hip hop and realizing, like sometimes I still to this day I listen to hip hop songs like from the nineties, and I find it's a sample from an old song that I never would have knew when I was fourteen. Now that I know, I'm like, right. oh shit, they sampled this song. I'm like, this is crazy. It's so like wild. Eric Clapton, you know, like Derek and the Dominoes. Like people don't people know Eric Clapton, but they don't cream, but they don't know Derek and the Dominoes. And you know, it's just like that's you know, that's where all that shit came from. Like I talk about Grateful Dead for hours, you know. Uh, you know, pre seven nineteen seventy two, you know, they had this like fucking this like hard, hard line that they took, you know, with their jams and stuff. And then, you know, after you know, uh, uh Pig Pen, one of the band members died, you know, they went in this you know, other, other area of, uh, but you know, I don't want to go off on topic, but, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, it's just, it, you know, music is meant to move you and it's, it's meant to bring people together. And, and, you know, I, I, that's what I take and you should take it for granted because that's what music's there for. You mm-hmm. should take it for granted. And, you know, it's, it's, you're pissed off and you, you put this on and you feel better. And you, I, uh, I was in a really dark place in my life and, and you know, like, uh, and Flea even said it, Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, Red Hot Chili another Chili band, Chili. you know, like, he's like, you know, I was in a dark time and like, uh, uh, Dr. Funkenstein from, from Parliament Funkadelic and George Clinton, you know, I have a fucking line from, from Dr. Funkenstein tattooed on the side of my fucking rib cage, you know, swift, flipping, ego tripping and body snatching because like that song is just like, you know, you could be in the shittiest mood in the world and you put on Dr. Funkenstein and you're like, and you're like oh yeah and you like get in this good mood and you know it's it's, you just got to get in that good mood and and music's uh it it is undefeated and put it bringing people out of shitty moods into good moods yeah yeah and i and i i I like about music too and it's one of the reasons why i enjoy cigar so much is that there's there's so much of it like we're never you're never gonna run out like there's always another band or another cigar that you've never listened to you've never tried mm-hmm. and like right. i i never listened to prince right i never listened to prince and then all of a sudden i'm watching the super <laughs> bowl and prince comes out and has in my opinion the greatest halftime show i've ever seen in my life and i'm like one of all the of most a sudden, talented people at musicians oh my he's unbelievable so then i just started youtube and like googling um, prince and then and it came up um uh, a song uh when my guitar gently weeps and he, yeah, they amazing. did 
they did a tribute, and I forgot who had passed away, but the guy who wrote that song had passed away, so they did a, a tribute um, to Eric that. Clapton. Yes, they did a tribute Eric, to, um, to Eric like Clapton. Uh, for whatever, whatever it was, they did this, and he comes out, Prince comes out, and just shreds a solo. And he's like, he's got this bouncer, like just, he leans over to the crowd, and the bouncer's like holding him up, and he's he's just suited up and like just looking just looking mint and he's shredding and i'm like i'm like where was this guy like how did i not know about this guy <laughs> so i just started listening to it listening to purple rain listen to all this i'm like this guy is incredible so it's like and all he played like things. 50 different instruments oh I, and he was incredible so my point is like you you always can find somebody else like i never listened to a tribe called quest and all of a sudden, you show it right. to me like, "Oh, this is great!" Now I can start listening to it. Like I was in the gym, and I just play on Spotify, and I put like a song on, just create a radio. And all of a sudden, like a band called Siamese sh shows up, and and I'm like, I'm like, this is incredible. I start listening to the whole album, and like all these different things just start popping up, Beautiful, and you can man. just start listening to new stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That's how uh, the Spotify and, and uh, what the hell's the other one? The older one? Apple Music? Uh, no, Pandora. Pandora. No. Pandora, I you know I gotta tell you like I like the algorithm of Pandora better than I like Spotify, uh, and I put I actually recently within the last couple of days I put on a on Spotify and I put it in my story on Instagram, uh, you know like all the songs that I've done for the Bill Binder show, you know like the intros and stuff. I started that as a playlist and I was like you know what screw it I was like I'm just gonna put you know on this playlist, I'm going to, I'm going to put everything that, you know, that I love. And, you know, I'm always like every, every like two hours, I'm like, Oh yeah, that song. And I yep. put it on, I put it on, I put it on a playlist, put it on a playlist. And, um, you know, like I, I tried, I tried finding that playlist when you first put it out and I couldn't find it. Um, it's, 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 it, it's still on there. It, 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 it's on my story actually right now. Cause if I put um, in Bill Bender and Spotify, it comes up with you on the rebar. Oh, here you go. The Bill Bender show playlist. Perfect. All right. Now it's that's here. it. Because yeah. I'm the same way. I have like a play. I have like, you know, I gave it to all Justin. I have a I have a '90s hip hop playlist, a '90s New York uh, hip hop playlist, so 2000s hip hop playlist, new uh, '90s par uh, rap party playlist. Like, like there's a mood and there's a time for every song. And I was always in the guy in high school that people would come to for music. So I wish I made it. If I made a dollar for every burn CD that I made for people, I'd be right. a freaking cajillionaire. Because I, I did. I did the I did it in the late two thousands, you know, I when CDs were just coming out, like out of play, you know, before the digital super digital stuff started coming, I would make CDs for people that you know I I you know my my buddies down here and and uh, they were like damn it just come out and I called it. And it's funny because we talked about white man can't jump, and my one friend he called me Billy Ho, and I'd be like the the B Ho. Uh, uh, mixtape volume one, and I put it on the CD. Yeah, do you like write all the? Do you write all the the artists down on the CD? I Absolutely. used to have. I used to do the same thing. I had like all. I had a whole CD book, and I would take my little disc man and it, and I because I would always listen to music in between classes, and I always have the CD. It's like volume one. You have all the artists. Volume two, all my. Like, what am I? Pop one in. Pop. Yep. Yeah. I, playlists I, I, are playlists are important. Playlists they're very important, they're very important. And like, you ever see the movie like High Fidelity? Uh. Um, that movie with high fidelity uh, uh, john cusack is one of my favorite actors okay uh, you know he his character you know he's like what makes a great playlist you know and and, and he like goes into it and you're like holy shit yeah you know, this is so true right? on so many levels but it's, yeah it, it's uh, like i got i got a boat i got a boat playlist you know a sunday sauce playlist i got so oh, many yeah. for all studio 54 studio 54 playlist like i got there's a playlist for everything cuz i guess i had a a, a niche for just combining certain songs because when I would burn a CD, I would just collectively put on songs that were alike. So if someone was like, Eric, I'm having a house party. I need a CD. I'm like, all right, right. I'm going to put all 20 songs. These are like the songs that flow. Uh, I'm going on a road trip. I need a, like a CD for, you know, my, uh, a CD for my road trip. I'm like, all right. And I had a set of songs and it was just, it's just wild. It's yeah. just, it's, it's, it's a right, beautiful you know, thing. It's for different, 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 uh, you know, different mind frames, different emotions. And, and also like, you know, me being from New Jersey, like down here, like there's no seasons. It goes from hot to hotter, you know, but, you know, you got the fall, the, the winter, the spring, the summertime, and, and you know, there's different playlists. And, you know, the, like punk music, you know, like Black Flag and Lagwagon and, and, and uh, No Effects and, and, and uh, Face to Face, and, you know, like all those, you know, it's, it's like, it's a different, 
it's a different charge to the soul depending on where you mm. are mentally, you know, at, at, at that point. And I uh, like that. It's a different know, it's charge deep. to the soul. <laughs> I like yep. that. Yeah. And it's, I find yeah. it interesting too about the thing with music is I found that you can never guess like what somebody really listens to. Like it's, you, you could be totally off base. Like yeah. you can, like if you, you know, if you look at like Bill Bender, you'd be like, all right, you know, he, he's got tattoos, right? He's jack, like he's wears the background. I'm like, I would, you could say, all right, he listens to, to punk. Maybe he listens to some hip hop. And then he's like, yeah, I listen to funk and I listen to like some oldies Motown. I listen yep. to like all these different things. Like people see me and they see me like dress dapper and everything. They're like, oh, you probably, you know, you probably listen to classical stuff, which I do. But it's like, yeah, I go into the gym and I listen to heavy metal, yep. and I'm listening yeah. to like hardcore. And they're like, you listen, like screamo. So you're like, you listen to stuff. I go, oh yeah. Don't it's like judge totally, a book. yeah. Don't judge a book by its cover. It's total. You can, people have total different um, like listening, and and across the board, like go from heavy metal to to fifties doo wop to like the wet to the nineties hip hop to Blink one eighty two, like all across the board. Like I got a oh. story. A story with that is. Um, I was in someone's office once, and um, I'm 29. So it was this lady. Her name was Dawn. So I was like, uh, I was like, all right, Dawn. You were 29. You were 29. I was. Or you, you are 29. You are 29. What did I? What did I say? I, see, I was you 29. Said, oh, I, was I don't 29. remember. I, I'm you so, are I'm, 29. You I am 29. I'm so in the. I'm so. In, I'm so focused in the mode right now. I don't even know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> but uh, no. So I'm 29, and. Um, uh, it was this lady Dawn. I was like, "What's your name?" And I'm like, uh, "She's like, oh, oh, Dawn." And um, she said, "Dawn, like, uh, like uh, the song Dawn from Frankie Valley. You probably don't know that yeah. because you're, you're too young." I and know. I'm like, "I'm yeah. like, oh, really? You mean like Dawn? Oh, yeah. Don't go away because I'm too." Uh, and she's like, "What? what? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you, oh hey. you know?" And I'm like, "Yeah, so I know what I know what you're referencing because she's like an older lady, so she had just assumed I don't know who the freaking Jersey Boys were." And I'm like. Frankie Valley, I mean. Frankie Valley uh, in a force. It's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's uh, even like there was even a point where it's like you, you know, like in the nineties in like in, in in you know, central New Jersey and people were like, You're either from the north or south and you're like, shut up. I'm, you know, I'm from central New Jersey. Like we would take a train from Trenton to freaking Penn Station and, and then go into the city and it, you know, like you you pop your ecstasy pill and <laughs> you know, you, you <laughs> wait, you wait outside of the sound factor, or the tunnel or like Twilo or, you know, I'm like Frankie bones and Adam X, you know, like Heather Hart, and, like, all the original, like, like, you know, like even like, uh, 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 uh Ronnie size, like the drum and bass and, and house music. And, you know, like I, I, I ran a bar program for, for a, a, a couple of years down in Miami and, and you know, we yeah, had winter music conference and shit. People were like, Oh, Afrojack and blah, 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 this <laughs> and that. I'm like, they don't know shit. I was like, I, I was rolling my face off in freaking New York in the nineties, you know, watching Frankie Bones, freaking like licking my face. Like, Oh my yeah. God, Frankie Bones. like out of control. <laughs> yeah. You know, like hey, whatever the moment is, 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 is where you are, you know, wherever the moment is mentally, that's where you are. And, and you know, any genre of music will, fight, it will bring you, you know, that bring you there, bring that smile to your face. And it's really important. It's, 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 based, music is the key to my sanity. You know, if I didn't have music or if I didn't care about it, then I'm, I might be like Patrick Bateman, like a fucking raging psycho from, from, <laughs> from you know, I don't want that. You know it, what? Yeah. The people who don't like music, which is rare, you don't, you definitely, like, I don't trust people, two people, people who have, the, like, the rubber car bumpers and people, <laughs> and people who don't like music. Those are, like, two people who I don't trust, like, just off the bat. Yeah. It's so you true. You gotta watch that guy. You gotta watch that guy. The bumper bully. <laughs> yeah, like, the, yeah, the bumper, like, I'm on the highway and they have the, like, the, li like, the rubber, it's not even, like, an inch thick and it's, like, on their bumper. I'm like, why are you it's wearing fat, 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 fat. Like, Why do you have that? Uh, get away from me. But. Yeah, exactly. It's so funny. But I mean, I think I think we're coming to the close here, right? I mean, yeah. So now we've been so, going for a while. Oh, we've been going for a while. We go well over an hour. So this is the the point in the episode where it's one smoke, one rating. So right off, just like you said, from right now, now you're at a point in life where you're just shooting off the hip. So yep. this is the rating comes off the hip. Just don't don't even talk about the flavors. Don't talk about nothing. Just rate your cigar one to ten. Eight. Eight. Boom. I give it, I give it an eight. Straight flat eight. All right, Eric. 
I don't know. I'm going to go off the rating just from the conversation and the good time that we're having. I mean, it's going to be in the same ballpark as Bill. I mean, it's going to be, I'll say, an 8.3. 8.3. 8.3. 8.3. The, the oh, my father, Le Bégier. The Le Bégier. The Jewel. The Jewel. The Le Bégier. The Jewel. So I'm going to go. So I'm smoking the LFD double arrow chisel. Um, 8.2. All right. Well, Bill. Um, we're gonna we're gonna close up shop before we do. Uh, we want to give the red carpet to you. We want to let people. You want to let people know where they can find you, where they can watch you. The the floor is yours, my friend. So this is your I'm, time to plug. Right yeah, here. your time to plug. <laughs> give we got a. Uh, yeah, I'm only on Instagram because I'm I'm not a fan of social media. <laughs> uh, so Bill Binder three. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, Binder stash. Is also on Instagram. I think it's on Facebook as well. Uh, we have uh, something really big coming up in January. Uh, we'll make an announcement on uh, Instagram. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that that's going to be huge. It's a big game changer, uh, and we'll do the release dates for the uh, for Binder Stash on Instagram as well. Um, we're going to shoot season two pretty soon. Uh, we're also doing something, another side project for another big platform. Uh, that's coming up soon. We'll be also making a, an announcement for that. And uh, what I got for you. Is Perfect. <laughs> I love it. We're looking forward to it. I'm excited. I know. I'm go- it's it's going to be cool to watch that. So, so Bill, so thank you very much for joining us here on The Burn Down. Everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, if you like this episode, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And please hit the bell to be notified when we post new videos. You can follow Eric, uh, Brother Cigar. You can follow myself, The Dapper Cigar. You can follow us together at Burn Down Podcast. You can also follow Burn Down Academy, which is our educational videos. So go to all those platforms. Hit the like button. Five-star rating. Follow them. Go follow Bill on his Instagrams as well. Bill Bender 3 and Bender Stash. And with that, we are going to send it off with a cheers to Bill Bender. Thank you very much for joining Thanks, us on man. the Burndown. Good, good chat with you. And uh, this has been a good one. So, chintan, my friend. Chintan. <laughs>